Hey guys, welcome to another one of our videos. I'm Worm, this is the Proton. Uh, today we're doing a review on a product we did receive free of charge. Uh, this will not affect our review on the product in any way, shape, or form. We are true and honest review as always. Always. Focus always. <laughs> um, today, what we're doing is the Igo W um, from vapegear.co.uk. Uh, Keith and a lovely Kirsty sent us it down to play with. Um, this is the version 2. Well, we don't know if it's been sold as a version 2 or not, or whether it's just something they've re upped and not bothered yeah. mentioning. Because basically, myself and Worm actually bought one of these about a month ago, uh, and it was one of the first places we saw that actually sold them. And it had a one, it had one 1mm one air hole. Um, this new one has got two air holes. We can see through the packet and everything. Um, it's got two air holes, but they do look smaller. So we don't know if this is going to be sold as a version 2, whether the one that was released beforehand is just going to be forgotten about as a bad mistake by UD or not, but this is completely different to the one that we bought, so we're doing a review on it. Um, we're going to show you how to re-wick it, um, and then we're going to have a vape, well, hopefully. Yeah, um, depending on how it comes out. Indubitably. So yes, we're going to go down and do that now, show you how to re-wick, and have a little vape afterwards, and discuss stuff and things. Right guys, this is us up close and personal with the iGo uh, W on our new camera, so hopefully you'll be able to see all this properly. Um, we'll go through the spares very quickly first of all. Right, I think I was having a chat with a worm before and it's just a standard bag of spares to be honest, it's the same as the uh, iGo F and L. Um, two spare O-rings, which are handy in case, well, you break an O-ring, a bit of silica, a bit of I want to say 32 gauge canthal, but I don't think it's canthal, it's probably nick chrome. Um, uh, so, a, a screw, a replacement positive and negative screw, and a bit of dowering for, I guess, your centre connection. Um, I don't know why this is like two inches thick. It may look big on camera, but that's a really small bit of wick. Uh, wire, sorry, so <laughs> honestly, I'm starting. Um, See, so yeah, I don't know why you they, they include that pittance of a bit of wire, but anyway, I doubt you'd have much success using it. Not if you've got wrapped two coils anyway. Well, you ain't got no jobs of two calls of that. <laughs> just doing one wrap on each. Um, right. Let's open well, the iGo. I'll come out of packet. That is the iGo W. Um, we have UD iGo W. One air hole, two air holes. This is version two um, because we had one and it had one one mil air hole. These are 2.5 air holes, um, which are incredibly small. Don't think it's going to be enough, but we'll see. Um, I'm not going to be able to get that body off, so you get a mod tight. They are always off. tight when they come, guys. It's got, it's got no juice on it, so it's not going to be lubed up in right. any kind of way. There we go. And that is inside your IGO W. That is, um, it's quite generously spaced, but it's not. Amazing. It's not as well spaced as it looks. I'd imagine. Um, it's still quite tight. How big is it? It's a twenty. I isn't think it? it's a twenty. I think it's a twenty mil dripper. Um, let me just. Size up against this together, yep, 20mm. Yeah, so I mean, it could have been done with doing like a 22, maybe even 24. Well, 22 would have been nice to fit with the 22mm uh, mods, but it is what it is. Um, the AGI top's actually 22mm, isn't it? Yes. Damn, these screws are tight. Um, so, yeah, it'd have been nice if it was the same size as the AGI, to be sure, because we really like the AGI uh, as a dripper as well, um, in particular, actually, as we like drippers. Right, what I've done, first of all, Loosen off your free screws so you can see through them, all right? It's gonna get quite busy in here, so make them nice and loose and to the point where they're almost falling out, but not quite, because otherwise you'll lose them and that one will come into play straight away. What I've got is two two mil pieces of wick and I have two bits of pre-flamed 30 gauge canthal. This is not 32 gauge, all right? So 30 gauge is gonna give you slightly less uh, resistance, I'd imagine, I think we're going to do six wraps on either side to try and get a semi-normal resistance uh, and I reckon that's probably going to round up about 1.2 ohms but there is only one way to find out so standard guys, pretty much when you're doing this is your standard wrap procedure, just grab your wick and go for it oh, not like me, obviously, ignore everything I do I don't know why I bother doing these bloody videos <laughs> honestly, I mean, no luck right, first call is always the hardest it is, it's just, it's getting your uh, starting momentum yeah, worm's probably going to chat to you for a bit whilst I do this because I am going to have to concentrate a bit more than I would usually Which, do. Which uh, wick did you uh, use? Two mil. Is it the stealth ape stuff? No. Huh? No, it's uh, John's wick. Oh, John's wick, okay. Mm. This is just some standard two mil uh, wick that we did get uh, 
sent to us just to test out. Uh, it's pretty good wick. Um, the wire uh, it protons. You yeah, bought that separately. Vape gear, lovely. Uh, do I want to do six? I've I don't. Well, you, it's dual core, it? I'd go with six. Yeah, I think I've done them a bit tight though. A bit too tight. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I would bring you up some stats on this, guys, but uh, currently got the screen uh, seeing what we're recording, just so Mr. Pratt can see what he's doing on camera, make sure his hands are there in place. Yeah. So. Uh, one second guys, sorry, standard procedure as always, wrapping calls. Now with this, unlike some other dual core drippers if you're used to them, now if you've got your cold screwdriver please mate, um, some other dual core drippers, you'll have to sort of wrap left handed one way and right handed the other way um, to allow for the fact that some posts aren't always equal, these are equal posts so, um, so you can wrap these whichever way you prefer and you can wrap them both the same, right, that's one wick and coil done. I've done six, six wraps of 30 gauge. Uh, hopefully you can see that there. Okay, that's my one coil. Uh, and that's just rinse and repeat process basically. Exactly the same on this one. Well, hopefully exactly the same because you want them to be the same. Um, otherwise you're not going to get equal ohms. I mean, basically when it comes to your dual coiling, you have the resistance, so if you want a one ohm coil, you've got to go for a, a two, ohm, two two ohm coils. Basically, that's how it works. So, on this, realistically, I don't think I'm going to get well. I'm hoping for about 1.2. It's just having said that to you, just then it's just kind of struck me that I I'm not using I'm using a bit less wick than I usually would, um, and I'd imagine I might be going sub ohm on this by accident, but we shall see. There's only one way for us to find out. Excuse, excuse the noises in the background. Worm's having a little play on his tablet, trying to get the uh, stats for the IGO W up. Why he didn't use his mobile phone, I really don't know. But it's just love. Yes, but your mobile phone's already on. Um, all right. So now, basically, guys, when it comes to this, you've got to find your path. You've got to find out what's easiest for you. A lot of guys will stick their coil in all the way and see how you go. I'll show you how I find it's easiest for me to do it. Um, from there guys, you can try it if you like. If it doesn't go well for you, then obviously try and give it a go a way that suits you and see if you can find what your desired or preferred method is. What I do is get my coil about that far in, bend these wires over so it doesn't pop back out. I'll then seat the other coil on the opposite side. Sorry guys, negative, negative. All right, it's negative on the outside, positive in the middle. So you're having two through the middle and one through even negative on this device anyway. Um, that's, that's, this, this is what I do anyway. I tend to basically put your negative through. Same as DDA, cut your wires slightly shorter and usually I will tend to curl them up. As this is the second one, I'm gonna take this one. Oh, no, I'm not because I've missed the bloody hole. Typical. Right. There we go, we're now in. As you can imagine guys, this can get a bit confusing when you've got all of those wires going on. But, again, you find your own way you're doing it. How have I missed again? How have I missed again? All right guys, well, while Mr. Prime's trying to thread the hole over there, um, just gone onto the Vapegear website and the IGOW summary says, IGOW, uh, the new dripper from UD. Details follow. Okay. Yeah, nothing there. So there is no details as of in, uh, at the minute, which is interesting. But we can tell you so far, it's, it's got a two 0 0.5 mil holes uh, in the sides of the uh, base, uh, well, the top cap, sorry. Uh, the base has got three po uh, three prongs, which is one is a positive, two negatives. Obviously, so you can dual coil this because this is a dual coil dripper. Uh, we assume it's either 3 or 4, 3 or 5 stainless steel. It's not going to be titanium. That's just an assumption, though. It's not this titanium. Is this is UD, so it probably is 3 or 4 stainless. So Right, guys. First coil's just gone in, all right, all the way in as you can see, and what I've done is bent those wires up. I'll now bring my, well, what is technically my first, but now my second coil, if that makes any sense as you're watching it in, and I'll take those down. Right, now, this negative, which will actually be there, you can pull that tight, which is what I'm doing with this finger, and I'll just screw it down. Do not over tighten these, all right, take it and screw it in so it's secure, but do not over tighten it, because this, and other devices that have this kind of setup have a nasty, nasty habit of breaking that wire as you're screwing the put, uh, negative down and that is going to mean that you have to pull that coil out and start all over again. Now what I'll tend to do is this negative, okay, so pull that in a bit tight and do exactly the same process that you've just done on the other one. So basically get it in, secure it down like so, hopefully that hasn't snapped it, 
Um, and there you go. Positives, I'll pull one tight, pinch it with my thumb, and make sure it stays tight. Pull the other one tight, pinch that one with my finger, make sure that stays tight, and then screw this down. Obviously, this is going to require less screwing because you've got two bits of wire in there as opposed to the one that you have in the negatives. Right. And we are there. Now it's standard bit of procedure where it's literally just apply a bit of tension. That's how I find it easiest to do. See how easy that came off? That is because the screw had cracked that. Luckily it cracked it on this side. Um, apply a bit of tension. Same thing with that one. It's a bit tricky when it wants to be this one. Right, this side I have to do a little twist. This side I have to do a little twist. Um, have we got something I can measure this on please mate? Uh, like the Pro Like the Pro Hovari. Um, just have a little quick adjust to the coils, try and get them sort of similar heights. You want to replicate these so they're the same on one side as it is on the other. Um, well, that's how I find best of this, you know, because it's going to give you the best chance of both coils being the same. <laughs> I really hope this isn't going to say low, but I'd imagine it is. <laughs> um, right, let's have a look, see where we go. Oh, God, honestly, oh, one too far again? No, it does it sort of. That was ohms. 1.3. That is actually not bad at all. That is kind of where I want it to be. Um, so we will be able to fire this on very volt, but bear in mind, guys, that's six wraps on each coil on a um, 30 gauge canthal. Sorry, guys, I just want to actually test fire this a bit. I should have done it whilst the provider was there, but I wasn't thinking. Um, oh, God. Let's see if we can get this. No doubt you would have test fired it, the provider would have said it's now low and. More than likely, away. yeah, more than likely. So now basically, sorry guys, I've just got to adjust my centre pin after having toyed with my uh, 19 a bit. Right, let's see if we can get some lighting coils on here. That's not too bad at all actually. It's kind of there. You can see one tends to light quicker than the other, which means I might have to do a little tinker. Not a major one, let's just see if that has uh, sorted her out. Mm. It's close. Yeah, it's it very close. Pretty much. Okay, so you've got two lighting coils. Now, what I tend to do, everyone's got their own way of doing this. Um, this is mine. Basically, um, I'm going to snip these down very slightly, take a couple of mil off each. I'm going to do this over the bin, guys. Okay, and then the same on the other side as well. Do, 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 do. And I tend to just fold them around and sit them in the well because obviously it has got that well. Um, so I tend to try. Have you got any juice? What are we going to use in this? Should we uh, use a bit of this? Yeah, go for it. A bit of this. Nice bit of toasted marshmallow, lovely. Um, all right, juice the coils up makes getting your wicks to stay still a bit easier for you. All right, so I'm going to do the same on both sides. Du, 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 du. Helps them give them a little prime anyway, guys. It's not going to hurt. Uh, we, we, I've got to prime these anyway, but this kind you just skip that middleman, and it does usually. And I do say usually for gritty teeth, but it's going to be a bugger, and it always is. We're on camera, so it's going to fail epically. It always does for me, I've noticed this. <laughs> Just my life story. Um, okay, so one side's down. And you might cut that side a little bit too short. No, nah, as long as there's some wick in that well, it doesn't matter. Right, there. That is what we end up with, hopefully. You can make that out. All right, that there is the IGW that I worked. That's the coil that was set in it. Ignore a few frays. Now, prime the wicks semi generously as it's the first pull. Um, and obviously, this is made with a well like the IGO L for you to be able to um, pull it. Let's Just be aware, we pulling have, it too much will flood this and you, the coils won't fire properly. We have got vapor. Lovely. Um, don't forget guys that with anything really you're going to want to line those air holes up with those coils now obviously they're completely opposite each other so I think if you can see that there's Slight angle. slightly angled something along those lines um, and then just your standard sort of I'm going to do about eight drops on this that was nine and ten um, and see how we go with that basically we'll bang a drip tip in there and we'll come back up to us and let's have a vape well guys, welcome back up. Um, obviously that was the re of the IGW. Um, kind of lost all the chain of thought. We had a little technical issue. And we've fannied around. Fannied around a bit and we've kind of lost all train of thought. We'll have a little flap about it. Um, first of all, price is 11.99 including tax from vapegear.co.uk which we think is actually very good. Um, 
because it's around the same kind of price as an IGOL and usually when something comes out people sort of branding better um, before you know about it it's usually quite more expensive so yeah I think that's a very good price um, drip did not include obviously guys but you don't get it with the IGOL or any of that kind of stuff so don't expect one make sure you've got one handy but it is a, cheap, a cheaper product from UD so it's yeah, going to be well made for the fact that you don't get dripped with it, not a massive problem. You can also get them as well on uh, Vancouver as well. Just a little bit of info there, UD ones as well. That's a UD one in there, it cost me like three quid. Um, and that's another one there. Indeed. As I mentioned, the ones that we actually bought a while ago, it wasn't from Vape Gear, it was from somewhere else. Um, one air hole uh, wasn't the biggest fans, um, I'm not going to lie, but we kind of got this through and thought, we know it's only a small change, but small change can make a big difference. So we've uh, had a little go, so you see me rear wicket. 1.3 ohms um, running on the 19. It's basically a brand new battery. It's been off the charge for about 10 minutes and it's been vaped all about two seconds. So um, I think we'll have a cheeky little vape. We'll have a little flap about it and then, so probably some more flap enough for that as well. Yeah, guys, obviously this is from UD, so we're assuming 304 stainless steel here. Um, we're not guaranteeing that, but we've got no exact uh, information on vape gear at the moment. They're obviously still updating their website with the, all the information relevant to the uh, I go W, so, um, but yeah, we're, we're assuming either 304 or 305, uh, 304, 303, stainless steel, sorry guys, uh, but it's probably 304. It's stainless steel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, this is, we, we, we're assuming the version 2, or just the remodel of it. Kind of one. similar to what they did with the Skelly 19, and it? Yeah. Oh no, it's a completely different company, but the Skelly 19 was released, nothing was ever said about it, it's just, oh, they've come with a spring on top and a different switch. One of them ones, I think it's, yeah. it's going to be a similar kind of thing. So this one, also got two hours. holes. Um, it, it's kind of, it is kind of a tight draw at the moment. We would, Miss Prime reckons uh, a one mil hole on each side. I reckon I'm going to get the drill out. <laughs> I reckon probably a little bit less than that, maybe like 0.8, just to widen them a little bit, because I don't think they need much more widening, but they do need a little bit more airflow in there just to give you a proper like, amount of vapour. Um, for me, that's actually, um, it's not bad. As well as pointed out, I do think that draw's tight, and I think it is too tight for me, uh, and this is just for me. In trying to relate it in terms of something that you may already have, in terms of, say for example, you've got an I go well, definitely tighter than I go well. Um, a mile tighter than the AGI, the AGT, it's tighter than all of them. It is a very, very tight draw. In my opinion, as Merv just said, I reckon these two one mil air holes, I said that from when we first got the one that we bought that had one one mil air hole, so if they stick another one around the back, one mil either side, perfect. Um, so that is the, the criticism that I've got them in, it's just, yes, they've gone, they, they've gone the right way, you need two air holes, um, you've got two calls, you need two air holes, obviously. But I still think they need to be slightly bigger for my tastes. Anyway, it's, I'd say it's almost like a Nova draw at the minute. And if you're used to rebuildables, a Nova draw is a long way back. Yes. Uh, yeah, it is tight, guys. Um, it's nice. I still don't rate it higher than a single coil dripper, though. Should we get into the five point hit? Yeah. And then we'll do that afterwards. Okay. Then. I'll let you go first. Uh, looks wise, guys. Um, it's UD. It looks amazing. It really does. It looks the same as my. Uh, other dripper I've got from them, uh, which is AGI. a AGI tank and dripper sort of thing. It's two mil narrower, so it's twenty mil, not twenty. Yeah, it's, it's not the same width or same girth on it, but it's um. A glance, you can tell they could just No, it, it looks exactly the same, just a like slightly bit smaller. So yeah, it looks like nine point five to me. Um, looks for me, I really really like it. I mean, the Segelli ninety is brushed and not polished, um, which you can kind of tell there, but. It, I, I really like it, I do. I think it's going to get a nine and a half for me out of looks. I think there's not, with this kind of dripper, there's not really a lot you can do with it apart from maybe curve the top like it did with the IGOL well or make it smaller or do some fancy stuff. But in terms of looks, I, I really do enjoy the way it looks. So yeah, it's going to get a nine and a half for me. Good. Uh, usability. Well, I know wrapping coils kind of comes under maintenance, but it also comes under usability as well because you have got to wrap them coils. Uh, so it kind of comes under both that sort of side. Um, the dual coiling, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. It's not miles difficult, uh, but it, it it does it is a slight learning curve there with it. Um, so usability, once you've got the coils in, it's not hard, you drip onto it like any other dripper and you press your fire button. It's, uh, it's not massively hard, it's just... If you're used to dual coils, it's gonna be a 10. If you're not used to dual coils, and you're used to, but you're used to wrapping, probably sitting around about an eight and a half to nine, if you're going to be new to uh, wrapping around coils, like a five, not where I'd start, but 
you know, it's up to you. If you want to buy it and have a crack, give it a crack. Um, usability, it's more to do with what you're capable of doing. If it's your first ever rebuildable, I wouldn't recommend you start with something with dual coils. It's just, it doesn't matter what device it is, this or any other dual coil device, I wouldn't recommend you start there. Dual coiling can be a pain in the bum. I've got a bit more experience with it than well, just because I try and wrap dual coils and everything I can. Um, usability for someone who wraps coils regularly, single coils. I go L, there's a learning curve. Um, I know it just seems like, well, I've done that and I've put it twice, and that is it on paper, but in theory, as I pointed out in the video, you over-tighten your screws, you snap on your legs, which is a possibility in any kind of device like this, um, whether it be single or dual, but this is one of those devices that has got that, so I'm mentioning it. Um, and you've also got the fact that you've got sort of, some people put it all the way in and then match the other one on through and put that all the way through. I find it easier to put one half in, put the other one all the way in and then pull that one tight just because I find it more consistent for me. It's just my preference, you've got to find yours. Usability for someone who's on a single coil dripper at the minute, seven. For someone who's used to dual coiling, 10. For someone who doesn't rebuild anything, three. Um, it's, they, they are the numbers as, as far as I'm concerned, for me anyway, but then you've got to bear in mind that an IGOL well would only be a seven for someone who's used to wrapping coils but not on a dripper, and someone who's not been touching it would only be a four. So it's, um, it's not a novice device, I'd say. It's someone who's had a bit of a tinker, maybe tried some dual coils and devices that were made to do it, and wants to move on to something that is made to do it. Uh, maintenance. In terms of maintenance, there's very little you can lose there, as long as you make sure the screws are tightened, tightened when you're washing them. <laughs> Sorry, my voice, His voice just went woo! <laughs> uh, as long as you make sure the screws are tightened when you're washing it, and you're not going to lose anything in there, it's literally the top and the bottom. There you go, wash it out, done job. And then the only bit, other bit of maintenance is putting the, the dual coil back in. Again, it's dependent on how capable you are with dual coiling. So if you're just talking without the coil, maintaining the actual device itself, Without actually putting the coils in there, it's a ten. There is no nothing there really that you're gonna lose. I think you get a spare screw, don't you? You get yeah, a spare. One. Yeah, we showed you in the spare. You get two spare rings, a bit of silica wick, and a bit of wire that you're probably not gonna so use. So if you lose one screw, screw, it's even not that bad. I mean, if you've got the other UD stuff, it seems like they're all kind of universal anyway. So I haven't checked the Diago screws for it in here, but there I was. would guess that they're very close if they're not. But you can pick up. I mean, these are just machine screws, small machine screws. They might be a bit harder to find than your average screw, but you would be able to find them if you wanted yeah. to. But uh, yeah, so maintenance, if you're just looking actually at the devices standalone without coiling it, I think 10. If you're going to be coiling it, depends on, again, how well you are used to coiling. Like we say, if you're a dual coiler by heart, 10. If not, well, between us two, you're sitting between 7 and 9, depending on how competent you are coiling. Uh, if you're new to coiling at all, don't. It's, it's the same as usability. Yeah, it's, it's low, usability. it's really low. Uh, maintenance for me, in terms of washing this thing out, it's a 10, you can't go any other way, you've got to rinse it and it's done, there's nothing to go wrong really. Um, in terms of putting your wicks in and stuff, again, it's the same as we've just seen used a video, I'm not going to go through the numbers again, all I will say is that, moth, moth. <laughs> um, all I will say is that when you are dual coiling, in my, my experience, and my experience with dual coiling isn't the same as it is with single coils, but I have got a bit of experience in it, um, they don't last as long as an equivalent single coil would, so... If I've got a 1.3 coil in something like an A7, it'll probably last me the best part of a week. Um, in a dual coil dripper, um, it tends to be about two thirds of that. So maintenance is going to take a little hit from me. I'm going to give it a seven overall, just because them coils do seem to drop off quicker, um, in my opinion. Okay, um, flavor and vapor of it. I mean, vapor, it's, it's a dual coil. It's, going, it's producing ample amount of uh, vapor from it. Flavor, on the other hand, it's going to depend on your setup. It really is. I mean, if you don't... Vapor. What? Vapor on the other end, yeah. You like said flavor. I said flavor and vapor. It's number one thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you said flavor and then flavor on the other hand. I don't Do know. you mean vapor? Vapor, yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to know. I didn't know what you were oh, talking about. Well, <laughs> vapor, you're getting plenty of dual core. Even if you do get the setup a little bit wrong, the vapor's still going to be producing quite a, a, an amount. Uh, in terms of flavor, though, uh, it is going to depend on your core setup. Sometimes it's going to be beautiful. Sometimes it's going to be terrible. Sometimes it's just going to be okay. And that is the problem with dual cores is uh, you've got to tinker with them to get them perfect. We don't very often get them perfect. This one's pretty Recently good. Recently I have been, to be honest. Pretty good. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, flavour's going to depend on your core and that. But if you get a good core in there, I imagine it being very, very high. It's going to be up there with your, like, your Genesis style tanks and your drippers and that. Or like your standard single core drippers that don't really take much to get right, if you know what I mean. But as a dual core, you've got two wicks in there. 
two heating elements or wire in there, you've got to make sure they're both heating evenly, otherwise it's just not going to be working. It's dry. I've the... just whipped that thing absolutely dry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it is going to depend a lot as we've got it going at the moment. The amount of vapour, 10. The amount of flavour out of that, at the moment I'm going to sit around about 9. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Okay, um, flavour and vapour for me, I mean, I'll have a vapour or something in the chat. <sighs> Flavour's getting a nine straight away. It is a nice flavour coming out of that, and them cores aren't bedded yet. Uh, it will improve a little bit more. Um, I might have just overfilled Flooded that slightly. Just it well, it'll be fine. Um, vapour, plenty, plenty, plenty of vapour. Loads and loads and loads. <sighs> this is where I want to touch on quickly, though. Them two air holes. Obviously, it has got air holes, and you do place them, so make sure in line with your core because that's going to affect your throat hit, it's going to affect your vapour. At the minute, it's more throat hitting than I like, and I know with two one more air holes, that would be less throat hitty. For me, it's nowhere near as bad as the Igo L, I'm not going to lie, but it is a bit throat, more throat hitty than it needs to be. Um, and vapour, I think, would improve with two one more air holes as well, and the draw would be nicer. It's just that's where I'm concentrating on this. The, the vapour at the minute is a 10, the flavours are 9. But that little one more tweak, and I reckon you're there for this dripper. Um, as Worm said, if you don't get the calls right, stuff is just going to go badly wrong. It's the same with any rebuildable, but with dual calls, it's a little bit more tricky. And I've noticed in my own experience, if you're not paying attention, if you're just trying to do things quickly, which I'm famous for doing, you're wrapping quick. If you measure them, which well, I don't usually, but one could be 1.9 ohms, one could be 2.4 because you haven't wrapped them the same, um, and you're going to have one that burns quicker than the other, you're going to get dry hits with a combination of nice hits, it's just make sure you spend a little bit more time putting the effort in, but when you do, the flavour and vapour are definitely, definitely worth it, I think. Yes, so overall as a uh, dual coil dripper, we haven't tried too many, I have to be honest, we have tried, or well, you've mainly tried re-wicking lots of stuff in dual coil which isn't meant to be. But I have tasted pretty much everything that he has dual poured. Um, they were all good. This one, better. By a, a long way, it's designed to do it. It's definitely showing in the actual device because it's with little tinkering, you saw it all on camera, with little uh, about amounts of tinkering, it works fine. It's not, I wouldn't say it's at its peak yet, but it's still very good. Bloody good, yeah. So overall, as a dual core dripper, 10. Compared to so single, like just your single core drippers, uh, a little bit more tinkering. So it's as long as you're willing to put the effort in, it's going to be a ten for you. If you're not, it's still going to be like a nine. It is still a very, very good dripper. Overall, for me, as it is now, eight and a half. Um, give me two one more air holes. It's a ten. Right, it's as simple as that. The two one more air holes, the, the, the very slight niggles I've got about this is that the drawers are too tight for me and the throat hit is unnecessarily harsh because of those restricted air holes. Barring that, it's pretty much perfect as a dual core dripper because you've got plenty of space to work with in comparison to a lot of other dual core, uh, dual core drippers that are out there. Um, the build quality is spot on, uh, especially for 12 quid, it's very, very good. The flavour and vapour are really, really good, it's just that little niggle. Um, and it could solve it. I do want to say very briefly um, that we've, as once pointed out, I've put dual cores in loads of stuff, and you can obviously, if you had an IGOL, well, you could put another air hole in it and dual core this out the other way. With three posts, these devices just scream quad meat. They really, really do, and it is. I don't, <laughs> they do. This just is. I'm looking at it going. Oh, it needs four. Um, <laughs> and it definitely needs two one more hours of that, but. It's an option for you, right? I'm just making people aware that that is an option if you're incredibly brave. Um, the only other bad point I want to point out about this, which is the same with a lot of drippers, and especially if they're stainless steel, it does get quite hot quite quickly. Especially dual coil in them. Yeah. Um, recently, with the dual coils I've been wrapping, power seems to be fine, running on mech, and they're absolutely lovely. 1.3, 1.4 ohms, it's sort of bang on where I want it. Going back when I was a bit more of a noob user with these dual coils, and I imagine if you are one of those people, you're going to have this similar issue. We used to have to find that we'd wrap a 1.5 ohm dual coil and we'd have to push it to like five, five and a half volts to get it to perform. Um, I don't know whether I've just been lucky recently or whether that experience is starting to show for a bit and all the effort that's gone into it is now starting to pay off because the last sort of six or seven dual coils I've, I've wrapped have been absolutely spot on. I think it's more because we're getting them even on both sides now. Before we was kind of like just throwing them together, half hazard, just trying to give it a go. Now when you when you saw him, he'd done exactly the same wraps on the same side, made sure they was 
at least roughly the same sort of tightness on the wick. He wasn't happy with one, he kind of retightened a little bit and it worked the trick. You have got to put that bit more effort in, but you can reap the benefits for sure. I, I don't think that you're going to be unhappy with this. Um, personally, I, like with this compared to the Igo L, the same kind of price range, I'd, I'd have this. Um, the only issue is, I th saying that, the ones that had one air hole, I'd imagine they only put one in so you could use it as a single core dripper. Now this has got two air holes, it's going to make it a bit more difficult so you can get air fed from one to But I'd imagine you're going to have no problem doing it. No. You can use single cores as well, just don't know how it's going to go. We'll, just we'll, we'll try and we'll let you know. Hmm. Um, but yeah. Are we done? Are we I think we're done. Are we done? No more flapping? I don't think so. Seems a shame. I know it seems a shame, but we had recently just done a massive hour long yeah. video. Oh. Flapping. Yeah, that's another thing as well. Sorry guys. I know with your um, <coughs> dual core drippers, everyone uses sort of 32 gauge can though. I've been finding recently the 30 gauge really works for me. So much so that I, I, I really aren't use, I'm not using 32 gauge in anything anymore. Um, I'd rather just wrap another core because it's the same resistance. Give it a go guys, honestly. I don't know if it's just me, I really would like to hear what people are doing with it because me and myself, I'm finding that to be spot on. Um, and you get a Rabio 250, a little spindle as well, so that's lovely. Yeah. Um, definitely gonna be missing some more of that. Thank you very much guys for watching. Um, I think we're pretty much done. I hope you're in support. This has been The Worm. See you soon.